This is an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar on advanced compression tips for Apple Compressor 4. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to deinterlace an image. Something else that causes a lot of confusion, and to be quite truthful, I had to do some homework to see this, is the whole idea of deinterlacing and changing frame rates. Deinterlacing is, is done from the frame controls menu, as is changing frame rates. Let's just load a piece of video here. We'll go back to our big horn sheep. Apply ProRes. The compression settings are controlled from inside the encoder. The size of our image is controlled inside the geometry tab. Deinterlacing and frame rates are controlled from the frame controls tab. Now the frame controls tab has this weird thingy right here. This is called an auto sensor. When it's dark, the auto sensor is on, and if frame controls need to be activated, then they activate automatically, and if they don't, then they're not. But we want to have explicit control over frame controls, so I click it so it goes a light gray. This turns the auto sensor off. Dark is on, light gray is off. Then in the menu, we can say we want frame controls turned off or we want frame controls turned on. There's two big areas to frame controls. There's resizing, which also includes uh, deinterlacing, and there's frame rate conversion. So let's take a look first at deinterlacing. First, a really important rule. If you are going to scale your image to 50% size of the original, you never deinterlace. You see, interlacing is caused by the fact that First we shoot all the even number lines, and then a fraction of a second later we shoot all the odd number lines in standard def. In high def we shoot all the odd number first and then the even number. In either case, we shoot half the lines and then a fraction of a second we shoot the other half. It's that fraction of a second that causes all of us grief. Because if nothing moves, then you don't have a problem. But as soon as you have a moving object, those, those interlaced lines, which are offset by just a fraction of a second, create thin horizontal lines radiating out from all moving objects. Because half the lines are, are out of sync with the other half, as soon as I reduce the image to 50% size, half those lines are immediately removed, and interlacing by definition goes away. So as soon as you scale your image to 50% or smaller of the original, you never have to deinterlace because it doesn't make any difference. But if your image size is the same as your interlace master or close to the same, then you need to deinterlace. But here's the problem. What deinterlacing does is one of two things. One, it removes half the lines. They're always gone. And then it either duplicates all the other lines. So essentially it plays line one twice, line two twice, line three twice, which reduces your vertical resolution by 50%, or it invents imaginary data based upon the difference between line one and line three. It invents a line two. Well, whether you're inventing data or duplicating data, either way, you're not actually using data that's there. It's just sort of invented, which means that the quality of an interlaced image is always less than the quality of a progressive image which means if you are ever given the option, always, always, always shoot progressive because it's easy to convert progressive to interlaced. It's really hard to convert interlaced to progressive. But if you need to, here's how. Set the output fields to progressive. Then set the deinterlace to better. Now, you may think that best is better than better, but actually, when it comes to deinterlacing, better is better than best because the best takes too long, and it doesn't give you that good a quality. Better is better than best, which means you use better, not best, when you want the best deinterlacing inside compressor. So we'll select better, <laughs> and you uncheck adaptive details. So to convert to progressive, this is set to progressive, this is set to better, this is set to adaptive details off, anti-aliasing and details are both dragged all the way to the left, and that's how you convert an interlaced to progressive image inside compressor. If you need to stretch your training dollars, the subscription membership to our video training library can save you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Adobe and Apple software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash 
subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on advanced compression tips inside Apple's Compressor 4. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store and look for Webinar 96.